Hello guys. Yes, it's a little bit different setup um, because I just came from the office. When I was in office, I got a comment asking a question. So I didn't go through that because because it's kind of a asking opinion about a solution or a problem. So I didn't go through it because I wanted to kind of a demonstrate uh, how you can provide the high level solution for a concern because when you're working on this IT field, maybe as an architect or a tech lead, you get a lot of questions, a lot of concerns, a lot of um, opinion you are asking from you. So then you might need to like listen to them. You don't have a broad understanding what they're doing, but you need to share your opinion with them. So today I'm going to kind of simulate that. So I got a question. I'm going to go through that question with you. I mean, I read the question, but I didn't process it. I want to go through that question with you. And I want to like build a solution together. I uh, together in the sense like I can't take your input, but so here's the thing: when you give a solution like this, the solution may not perfect because a you don't know what they're dealing with, you don't know environment or anything. Uh, number two or a B uh, because you don't know their complete problem, right? So you listen to small problem and you're giving a solution. So here's how it goes: Hi Krish, I have a problem statement. I have a web application based on Spring Boot. So they have a web application based on Spring Boot, right? And then it's UI is React. Okay. So there is a UI with a React. I mean, it's irrelevant whether React or Angular is a JavaScript based UI. Okay. That's most important. Uh, web application is all over the internet. Web application is open to all over the internet. That means web application is uh, can access from the internet. And web application should be able to access the server REST APIs. So that means Spring Boot APIs. The same REST API I want to get used by other application, but I want to implement authorization to access APIs if these are getting accessed by other application. Can you please suggest how should I implement Okta authentication provider? I will be using. Okay. When you get a question like this, or when you get a like problem statement like this you need to divide into smaller pieces right here he's saying back end is a spring boot front end is a react as i said what important is a javascript based front end and this api required to access by other external uh, clients right so external sources and that mean and there is octa which is a uh, authorization provider authentication provider right so now there are certain things is important to us certain things are not important to us that is what we need to first figure it out number one authorization provider octa is not much relevant as far as it is an authorization provider uh, or as we call it idp identity provider so that is what important it is not octa or a key clock or a cognitor it's not much relevant i'm not saying it is completely irrelevant but it is not much relevant in our use case right so now uh, let's see how we can do this okay so first we need to isolate the problem what he's saying other apis other than other clients other than the ui need to access this backend right so that means indirectly we need to understand uh, react ui also access the same api but as far as api is concerned it is irrelevant whether it is coming from its own react ui or it is coming from the different client here is why, right? So now, let's say you have your Spring Boot API, right? Maybe you have multiple instances or something like this, right? And then when you have a UI, this UI technically running on a user's machine because it's a JavaScript front end. That means it coming to the user's machine and then it's executing from there. So there is a huge misunderstanding and misdirection maybe your, your, your ui hosted on the same kubernetes cluster which is which your uh, backend service are hosted maybe in the same aws or azure or somewhere that doesn't mean your system is running on the backend because this is a javascript front end it is coming to the user and it is running on a user's machine that is most important part so that means users now coming from the internet right so user is coming from the internet so that means your front end and the user both are in internet right so now 
let's say your services are hosted on somewhere like AWS or somewhere. I don't know where it is, but let's assume it's somewhere you hosted on maybe a private data center. What's important is it is open to internet, right? So now, for somehow it's open to internet, right? So now, if the API is open to internet, I mean, if they say UI is open to internet, as I remember, but UI open to internet and UI want to access the backend API, I mean, obviously API also open to internet. So now, first thing we need to do is, we need to put an API gateway, right? API gateway. Why? Because you may expose one or multiple APIs, then you need to open API gateway. Why is open uh, API gateway required? Because you're saying in your question, there are other services, let's say S1 and S2, they also access in these APIs. They want to access this API. Now, probably you need to throttle the, them, right? For example, you are allowed to uh, send 1000 requests per day, or you are uh, allowed to request 1 million requests per day. I'm charging you this much for this much, uh, this number of requests, right? So that means you are kind of a, uh, have a business deal with them. So that means you need to charge them based on the number of requests. Let's say you like you you run your API cloud, one API sending one one your customer who's calling you API sending hundred requests per day, other one want to send the two million requests per day. Then obviously your resources consume more by the second uh, your consumer that second client. So therefore you need to add some throttling, right? So you probably need to add some throttling and api security right like a api key or something like that so you need to implement these things so therefore implement the api gateway is must and then there are additional features like a cache so that's the number one you need to do and then so you are saying you have a octa uh, uh to idp right so it doesn't matter who it is so now what you need to do is you have to implement a token validation on your gateway level that can be other proxy right or that if it depends on what api gateway you're using if the api gate doesn't api gate doesn't support out of the box so you can use a proxy what that proxy does is the users in the jwd token and then use uh, this proxy talk to your idp and validate the token if the token is valid it allowed to go to the api gateway right so that's the number two right number one adding api gateway number two now we are going to add a proxy number three you can do is right if these api those informations are not uh, clear if these APIs are scalable, if like now today, like one instance, when the load comes 100 instance, then obviously you probably better to have uh, some sort of a load balancer, right? These are optional, this can be some type of load balancer or service discovery or some sort of a thing, right? It can be Zulu or something like that, whatever the product you're going to use, right? So you can uh, attach this type of product as well, right? And now you have external clients other than your UI, so better to implement the caching. Now keep in mind these are optional, right? What the caching mean, if the same request comes twice within a five second time, you are sending the same response. I depend on, I mean, don't count on this five second or two second thing. It highly depends on your business logic can be use cases. So you can do it, right? So now I think we answer your complete question. I want to implement other application. Can you please? So now all the requirements are fulfilled, right? So you have other APIs. So those APIs are getting uh, like uh, you can use OAuth, OOIDC, right? So you can base on this. They are they create app client on uh, your IDP or Octa or a Key Clock. So then uh, they use their app ID, like because in the OAuth there are two flows, right? I mean there are multiple flows for a UI. Okay, this is important for a UI, you need to use auth code flow, right? For uh, these other services, you need to use client credentials flow. Why? Because, why auth code flow? Because it's a front end. You can redirect to, a, uh, redirect to get the token, exchange the uh, token with the code. But the other services are back end, as you're saying, other services. So that means they need to use a client credential flow, right? So those, everyone connected to, in your case, Okta, right or some sort of idp so idp is providing a token to them and they send the token uh, to the api gateway or the proxy or api gateway will validate the token and go back to uh, service now someone will question okay um don't we need to validate the token in service level i don't have enough information to tell that because sometimes we use ssl termination over the gateway 
and sometime uh, you can use it open validation on the back end as well but each and every services uh, because there are two type of traffic right so north east so north south traffic east west traffic right so now east west traffic mean the traffic between flow between uh, different services so now everyone is going to validate the token is because of these are like invo uh, involved tls signature validations and ssl validation and so many things it's like it's computing power it's up to you whether you really need it but technically if your security architecture is fine and in a, it, it would be enough to validate within the api gateway or a proxy level so now we're done we create a solution within simple time keep in mind this is not a perfect solution why because i don't have enough information to tell that but it's a good enough solution to your question then i'll see you in the next video stay safe take care